Welcome back. Today I'll be going over the guitar. So we made a body in the last video. Let's make a little section for the neck to go into now. Um, so I've got my XZ plane and that makes it for a great reference for planes. So I'll create a new plane. Just going to fine tune that. So in the newest plane that we've created, I'll activate a sketch. And yep, that is the uh, view that I want. So let's first start off with two lines. And uh, the center point between those, those two lines makes it really easy to reference the center. Let's make an arc. And an arc here, right? This is just a little channel to hold in the guitar neck, which I've never taken a guitar apart, so I don't actually know, you know, what kind of dimensions the neck are. So I'm just kind of making this up. All right, let's uh, grab this line. And this line, of course, you hold shift to select multiple things. We're going to say equal. Let's grab a horizontal relation and make these two points horizontal with each other. And now I can grab a dimension and we'll make this 30 degrees. That's more like it. And now maybe I can make this whole thing, I don't know, inch and a half. We'll grab a tangent to clear that up from here to here will be tangent. And then of course we'll have to huh, try to get that adjusted. Wow. I really did a number on that one. All right. So that should snap to the tangent the way that I want to now. <laughs> there we go. So while we're at it, I'll grab this arc and this arc and establish an equal relation. Apparently we already have enough to make those equal. So I'll just grab my dimension here and make that say 0.325. Again, I am working in inches in this video. Next, I'll reference my origin here and say maybe 1.25. And then, you know, what part of my guitar do I want my neck to be, right? How far over? So I should have the luxury, I guess I better establish a dimension here, but I should have the luxury of being able to slide that back and forth. So maybe I'll come over here and say something like 2.33. And now it should be all 100% sliding. So maybe we can give that a try, right? I'll reset my view and add a dimension. And we'll make that vertical. And I'll take that down to 0.5. We'll see how that goes. May, you know, visually maybe even zero. <laughs> We'll see how that works. Of course, you technically want to be able to fit your hand in there, so hopefully you still can. And let's adjust this from 1.25 to 1.75, actually 0.75, right? So I want to have some thickness in here to uh, actually screw the neck into. Maybe one point, or I should say 0.7. Right. So let's go with 0.7 and deactivate. Now I can do an extrude. And yeah, let's do a depth of negative three and select our sketch here. That looks about right. All right. So 
that looks rather ergonomic to be able to use. That was my goal. As long as your hand fits in here, might be kind of tight. So we might have to readjust the neck, but I'm not going to worry about that because this isn't going to be a real guitar for me. I'll grab this face right here, activate a sketch, and let's say there's three bolts that will hold the neck in. You probably don't need to go more than a quarter inch. So we'll set all of these bolts equal. We'll give this a dimension of 0 0.25. I'll grab a vertical relation down here. And let's go with horizontal. Yeah, that seems like it's not too bad. Uh, maybe I'll try to enhance this with a symmetric relation from here to here between these holes. So now that I know that we should be symmetric, that's what I want. Now you can fully constrain this if you want to, right? In any serious project you would. So 1.35 maybe. Maybe 1.25, something like that. And then, yeah, I guess I will fully constrain everything just to show you can. 4.65, perhaps. <coughs> wow. Don't worry, I don't have corona. And now I can deactivate, and we can do another extruded cut through all once more. So we've got a handy little place to put in our neck and bolts for the neck. If you were fancy, you could probably countersink it, but we don't have that much material there as, as we speak for right now, so I won't worry about that. Now, let's make another plane. Let's determine the depth that we want our pickup groove to be and work on some pickups. Grab this plane. And actually, I can just click here. Yeah, that seems pretty reasonable. Maybe 0.125, right? So eighth inch above our base plane. We'll close that. Now in the tree, I can go to my latest plane and activate another sketch. This time, I want to make a slot shape. I think the Pro version actually has slots, but don't quote me on that. It's been a while since I've been in a Libre Pro. But it's quite easy in the hobby version, Libre Atom, to make a slot shape. Not too bad at all. I'll set up vertical, 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 right? <laughs> Now again, vertical, vertical, vertical. There we go. We'll choose horizontal and horizontal, right? So now um, I'll do a dimension. Yeah, this line, let's say two inches. This will be something like 0.4. And then I'm gonna actually project a reference figure and this line, right? So this line should reference my neck, but not actually, let's get rid of that. This line right here, the center point of this line should reference the center point of my neck. And so that would make a pretty reasonable uh, center point that I can link up here or we'll reset my view. And now I can establish this as a vertical line, except something went horribly wrong. I don't think I imported that line. Yeah. Maintain reference is a good lesson. So grab this. Project that to sketch. 
Create reference figure and maintain reference. That's what I was missing. Now we'll create a line, reference my center point. We'll go with vertical. And reset view. One point one five there, and we're fully constrained. Let's make this have three pickups. I'll make another arc. This time we'll have you know one of those pickups that like go at an angle. I always thought those were pretty cool. Now I am not an expert on guitars. I'm just showing a concept on how you can make a guitar in CAD, and you can adjust it to your needs if you are an expert yourself. Oh. But I don't know if the diagonal pickup functions differently than normal pickup, but regardless, they're pretty cool. So we'll do a vertical constraint between our arc centers, and that should space out the diagonal one, the longer length it needs to be. And then we'll give this like a maybe a 10 degree angle, right? There we go, 10 degrees. And then I'll continue to make this there. We'll grab an equal relation from here to here. And that other one is equal, so it seems to follow it pretty well. And I think the only question is, you know, how do we want to position this? How far up or down do we want to go? So I'll go from arc center to arc center here. And maybe something like 1.5. Let's make one more pickup since I like guitars with three pickups or more, even though I don't know very much about how pickups work. I mean, I know that they are probably magnetic and whatnot, but what the numbers of pickups do and how it affects the sound, I'm actually not too knowledgeable on that. All right, so we'll go with tangent, 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 tangent. So that got horizontal. I'll choose a vertical relation. I'll reference my first pickup for that. And vertical again. I know we've got some equal relations over here, but we'll make it equal to our first pickup. And then it looks like all that's left is how far up or down. So maybe if I do this lower point on the pickup and reference that, to be 1.5 inches, that's looking pretty good. So how deep our pickup channels go is going to be how deep our plane is, right? So let's deactivate. So if we want to adjust the depth, we can, I guess we can cut extrude in two directions, or, which I think is probably better intent, adjust the height of the plane. We're going to say through all, but I think that might be through all in both directions, and it is, which is what we don't want. Unless we do, I mean, depending on what kind of guitar you want to design. Well, let's um, edit this, actually. And I think I'll specify um, just two depth, and our depth should exceed the depth that we want, except I do need to make sure that that's going in the right direction. So we'll uncheck reverse. And there are some grooves for pickups. That's pretty handy. Might as well make a channel for the bridge now. Let's just assume that uh, this plane, our XY plane, is a good um, location for the bridge that runs an eighth inch deeper than the other plane that we'd established. I'm going to create a similar sketch, but maybe with a little bit more detail. Maybe our bridge will be a bit wider. And of course, we don't have that thing that's available in SolidWorks, so I'll create a different arc. And maybe. Maybe this will be cooler than my last version. 
I'll make kind of a swoopy back end of my bridge. And then hopefully I can close that off with a line. We'll go with vertical. And then let's go with a line here. I can grab my midpoint. And we'll make that vertical. Right now we'll have to grab a tangent relation from here to here. And from here to here. Now we'll grab an equal relation from here to there. It's all starting to come together now. We'll make these lines equal because I don't think they are. There we are. And now I think I'll just need to establish a few more dimensions. How about make that four inches? Give this a larger radius. Let's go with maybe three inches. We'll establish this arc 0 0.375, 0 0.75. And then one last. Two inches. How about that? That's kind of a cool looking bridge. So we'll deactivate that. And we'll extrude cut. Same thing. Uncheck reverse. So we've got a little cutout for the bridge. Hopefully there's enough room for a whammy bar in there too. Those guitars are pretty cool. My first electric guitar did not have a whammy bar, but I still played it all right. Now, maybe we can add some fillets in here. And also, I think we'll need some uh, places for knobs and some a, a spot to uh, plug in the cord. Now, my first electric guitar had a spot right about there that it plugged in kind of into the side-ish bottom area but a lot of guitars will plug in somewhere in this face and i think that'd be a lot more interesting to make something up here so let's plan for that um, first things first i want to make another plane i will reference my xy plane and plane We'll go to the right. So we're going to be sketching just above and we're going to be cutting down into the guitar for our knobs. Activate a sketch on plane 19, what I just made. And where do I want to have my knobs, right? Where you adjust volume and bass and treble and that kind of stuff. Maybe we'll put three down, because I've seen guitars with three. And then we'll have something plug in in this area. Let's make sure that all these are equal. And we'll probably have to cut out um, down to the same depth. So... 1.5 ought to be big enough for your hand to be able to grab onto. Um, this is very abstract, this placement of knobs. So, it's you know, I've done so many videos where I haven't fully constrained, though. So I'll just fully constrain this, right? I'll reset my view. And sometimes fully constraining holes is just as simple as giving them an X and a Y, right? So that hole's constrained. Or you can call that a circle. You could say that circle is constrained. So is that one. And I'm doing this by the origin. You can also do them relative to each other if that's important. So we'll deactivate. Let's do an extrude cut. And let's see if we can do so judiciously. Right, let's try to cut this as shallow as possible, but maybe still getting the full circles. Oh. 
Right, so if I cut it that shallow and say OK, wow, even that is shallower than, than I need. That's great. So let's say negative 0.1. So that's what I'm talking about where we won't get the full circles over here and it looks like right there. So let's go with edit. And let's try negative 0.15. And that's about right. So we've got the full circle for an adjustment knob to sit in on. Now let's, uh, and I think I'm almost done here, let's make two planes so that we can create somewhere to plug in the uh, you know, output cord or cable. So let's create a plane that's relative to the YZ or XZ. No, that's YZ, the YZ plane. Looking at this from the front. And I'll reverse that. So let's say we plug in right there. And then the channel that we'll plug into, let's make another plane. We're choosing the axis, so let's choose the YZ plane there. Let's view from the front once more. That's looking pretty good. Let's apply that. So I have these two new planes now. And we're going to go from here to activate our 2D sketch. And it looks like the origin of my sketch is not quite where I want it to be, so I'll make a circle right about there. I'll reset my view now. And I'll have over half of my circle outside. And that way I know that there won't be an overhang which might affect, you know, how you'd manufacture the guitar or something like that. So we'll go here and say 2.85. We'll establish a height here of 0.4. One point three seven five. Deactivate that sketch. Now we'll go to the second plane that we've made and sketch on that. Now I want to draw a second circle. We'll make this circle larger and we'll have the circle completely not touching the guitar. And I think we've done it. I just want to check. That's that's looking good. So I'll reset my view and uh, give it some basic dimensions here. I think my dimension was 2.85, so let's see if we can keep that consistent. And this will be more arbitrary, 1.7 maybe. And then we'll give this a diameter, 2.85 again, that's kind of cool. We'll deactivate that. Now this should be simple. We'll grab a loft, well, not a sweep, but a loft. And I can choose this sketch here, that sketch there. And of course I did an additive loft. <laughs> I didn't want to do that. I'll leave that in so that everyone can see my mistake. Let's go with sketch and sketch, this time a subtractive loft. And there's a channel that we can plug into. I actually might want to go a bit deeper looking at that. I think I will. So we'll edit the sketch. There's my dimension. Let's go with Let's go with 0.25. Let's go with 
and deactivate. Now there is probably a bit of an overhang, but I think I can get away with uh, doing some fillets to get rid of that, right? So we plug our cable into there, and maybe something that'd be interesting, I just want to see what it would look like if I specify tangents, and of course my magnitude will probably have to be quite small um, in this case for it to work. So small magnitude, normal, it's looking very interesting indeed. I like it, I think. So I'll leave that. Um, how about we work on some fillets? I'd like to fillet this front area as well. Actually, though, I want to probably highlight this corner first. So we'll do a fillet and something like 0.1. Ooh, that worked. Nice. And let's edit that and add in a few other edges. And that did not work. So troubleshooting fillets can be very interesting and it can also be very discouraging. But one easy solution that you can try is to try to do it separately. So I've created my fillet and now as a separate fillet, let's try adding that. And it worked. So that's one easy way to troubleshoot a fillet is make your fillets, you know, in multiple, <laughs> multiple goes instead of just one. Let's try the same over here. Let's have a large fillet on this edge. Fillet. That's, oh, I was going to say that's maybe too large, but I actually like how that turned out. Let's do eighth inch here and here. And everything is looking pretty smooth. Not bad at all. So you just have to add like an angled hole and you can make this whole face angled too if you want to just by applying an angle to the plane that we sketched this sketch on. It's up to you. I think I'm gonna add some very small fillets. 0.05 and we'll go here here and here, right? Let's see if 50 thou works. It does. I could probably choose this whole face and see if that goes. And there we go, right? We got 50 thou fillets everywhere. Now I'll edit this fillet that I just did and I can add in these faces too and I bet it would work. There we are. So we just smoothed out a bunch of faces on our guitar. In fact, uh, I think some of the only sharp edges we have are these holes now. So that puts us in a great position to uh, <laughs> make some of the other components. I will be putting this together as an assembly and I think it'd be a fun project to do to be an assembly. So thank you for watching. Hope it was helpful. If it was, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.